Hello everybody, today I'm going to be teaching how to play the game Fabled Fruit by Freeman Fries and Stronghold Games, produce the game, uh, distributes the game in America. Um, and in this game, you are trying to make the fabled juices uh, of the forest. And uh, you're doing this by visiting the these animals in the forest. And they're giving you some actions that you can do which will generally allow you to get fruit cards in your hand um, and then you can spend those fruit cards in order to purchase um, or make these juices. So um, every card will basically have some text that you can do an action and then if you want to purchase or make the juice you have to have these juice cards in your hand and then you can take that card and that's the juice that you put in front of you and if you get a certain number of juices, then you win. Um, in different player counts of games, you need more or less juices. For a two-player game, you need to have five juice cards in front of you. In a three-player game, you need four card. You need four juices. Excuse me. And in a four or five-player game, you need three juices to win. So to start, um, you will see that there is a giant stack of cards here. Um, and uh, this game, it's a, it's a fable game, which means that um, there are all these cards here, and these cards will eventually be coming out. But to start, um, these are all put in order, um, and they all have numbers on the back of them from 1 to 60. So there are 60 different location cards or, or animals that you put out. So to start, you're going to open the deck, and you're going to put out um, cards 1 through 6, and there's four copies of each card. So you put those out on the table, and that's your starting setup. Um, later in the game, every time that you purchase a fruit card, or make a juice card, I'm sorry, and you put it face down in front of you, then a new animal or location card will come out. So now, at the beginning, you only had six places you could go, uh, but now you have seven places you can go. So every time that you purchase or make a juice, uh, another location comes out. And there's always four copies of each card, so the first four times you do that, it's gonna be, uh, it's just gonna create one location, but then right once that finishes, then you're gonna have a different location, and then, um, and you know, you see more and more different things. Um, so anyways, uh, let me explain how to play the game, um, because that's important. Um, at the start of the game, um, you're gonna have to punch out some components. Um, the only things you're really going to need are this deck of 60 fruit cards, um, these six um, locations, four copies of each, and then these animals here. Um, you'll see there's also a monkey. Um, this is not introduced in the game yet. Neither are any of these pieces, and neither are these 10 cards which show double fruits on them. So all that stuff you can just put right back into the box. It's not important yet. You're not going to need to use it. Um, each player is going to take an animal token um, and place that in front of them, and that's going to be their animal. And uh, we'll just say for a three-player game, this is what we'll have set up. And um, there are, it only goes up to five players, but there are six animal tokens. So let's just say that um, basically what happens is that uh, whatever animal isn't used or whatever the start players can choose to take one of the animal tokens, that marks them as a start player. Um, because everybody gets an equal amount of turns starting with the start player, so um, that's a good way to keep track of that. So to start, everybody gets two fruit cards dealt randomly from the deck, and uh, you can have as many fruit cards in your hand as possible. There's no hand limit, um, and you are trying to, like I said, uh, go to these locations and collect more fruit. Um, each location has some special action that you can do to it. So. Um, uh, if I go here, this says I can draw two fruits from the stack. So I can just draw two fruits here. So that's a coconut and a grape. That's good for me. Um, the next player can then choose to go to any location that they would like. But if they visit a location where there is already an animal there, um, before they do the action on the card, they need to pay any animals that are there, uh, one card from their hand, one fruit card from their hand. 
Um, if there were uh, multiple animals, it really doesn't matter who was there first. Um, if you ever visit there and there's uh, any other animals, you have to pay them um, a fruit from your hand. Um, if you only had, say in this scenario, there's two animals to pay and you only had one card to pay, you can choose which animal you give it to. And then you have zero cards, which means you don't give the other animal any cards. Similarly, if you had zero cards to start and you go here, you also don't need to pay anybody. There's no penalty there. Um, so in any case, you can uh, visit, if you can visit any location you like, um, again, taking the action that's on the card. Um, and on a future turn, um, you cannot visit the same location that you were just at. You have to move to a different location. Um, when you move to the locations, uh, you can always do the action that's on the card, or you can purchase or make the juice um, by turning in the required cards that are on the bottom there. So um, this card here says you need three grapes and a smoothie. Now this smoothie means a wild, so you can use anything you want. Um, a few other things to make note of on these cards. Uh, this number at the top, that's just the location. Um, it's uh, just used to keep track of locations. Up here, this essentially says what it does. Um, the action, draw one fruit, then exchange three fruits. Down here, there's a bit more explanation um, if you need it, but that's just kind of a uh, rough idea of what you're doing. The game also includes a glossary, which uh, has even more details about all the cards if you have any questions. Um, and there's also a signpost on some of these cards. Some there are, some there aren't, you know. Um, and uh, so you are always able to do the action. If you cannot fulfill the action and there's a signpost on there, that means that you, if you can't fulfill it, you don't do the action, and then you just draw a card off the top of the fruit stack. Um, let's see here. So... That is um, basically the whole game. Um, uh, like I said, whenever you purchase, so if I turned in, in a sense, I have three grapes and a coconut, so I would turn in all these into the discard pile. If this fruit stack ever runs out, you just shuffle the discard pile and you start over. So um, I would take this card, I put it face down in front of me, I'm one step closer to winning, and then again, we just take the top card off the stack and we make this new location. Um, if I were to have purchased the last card from a stack, uh, my person goes back to me, and then on a future turn, I can place uh, my animal wherever I like. As soon as this new stack comes out, as soon as like a single card comes out there, anybody can go to visit it, um, and uh, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, once the game is over, uh, the... Um, Whoever wins is the person who gets to the required number of juice cards. So in a three-player game, it's whoever gets to four juices first. If multiple players tied, then whoever has the most uh, fruit cards remaining in their hand is the tie break. They win. If both winners have the same remaining fruit cards in their hand, then they have a shared victory. If you want to play multiple sessions, you can give points. So whoever wins gets two points. Um, whoever has the uh, lowest score gets zero points, and every other player receives one point. And then you can just keep track of that and uh, as you're going forward. Um, when you're playing, obviously, you know these new cards come out. If you want to continue in this in the system, basically play like a campaign. Um, you're always going to have 24 cards that are out as locations. So at the start, you have four cards of six different locations. But as you're going on, you might have, you know, uh, different cards in the areas. And there might be, you know, more than, um, more than, uh, more locations than you might expect. But there's always 24 cards out there. So if you ever want to uh, stop the game um, after a session... You essentially just take the cards, stack them up in order, and um, you're always going to have 24 cards. So you just take them, you stack them all up, and then you put them on top of your stack, and then you put them inside one of the uh, included baggies to keep them in order. And that way, your next game, when you start off, you just count 24 cards off the top, 
and then lay them out in the, appro in the appropriate uh, order, and then you're ready to play um, the next game essentially in the session. Um, and uh, that is all the rules that I can think of. Um, basically, like I said, the, the rules are, are spelled out on the cards, um, and uh, as you go on, more cards come out and more rules that come out, and they might introduce you know additional uh, items into the game, which is neat. Um, but you don't really need to worry about that until the time comes. So uh, that is Fabled Fruit. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks.